Thank you for the introduction, Professor. Good morning to everyone gathered today. Um, I normally start most of my lectures to students at schools, and I first ask the question, have you, did you have your cup of sunshine this morning? Okay, because although it's raining, we found that recently we find that we get solar power from 5.30 in the morning here in Trinidad up till 6.30 in the evening. So it tells you the amount of power we have here. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the university for inviting me to speak on renewable energy this morning. And as mentioned, I, cur I currently work in the RE industry on a daily basis for the last few years. Um, actually, when I first started, I was doing innovations of products before. And when I got into the business, I was asked, um, do you want to get into this business? And I said, yes. And the guy told me, how much should I pay you? I said, I shall work for free for the first six months. And I was able to accomplish that because when you like doing something and it becomes part of you, that passion drives you, especially when you see the joy it brings to people, which I will explain as we, we go further along. Um, I've worked on several designs, innovations, and implementation projects and here in the Caribbean, areas in Central America, and we also did a very large project in New Jersey um, two years ago, which is a 500 kilowatt project. So most of us here who are not aware that a Trinidad company or a Caribbean company is capable of doing that, um, we are also looking at designs for several airports throughout the Caribbean, simple as the gentleman mentioned before. I must say, you beat me to the Antigua project, but the next one, that may not happen, okay? Um, our topic today is renewable energy in the Caribbean, the options and challenges. What exactly are we talking about? You make, we often go to class and you see students pick up a book, they're studying, they're on the internet, and they're looking and doing all the research. I will tell you that everything I did today, apart from, I'm going to do today, apart from the practical aspects I do on a daily basis, is available for everyone to learn. And it's quite easy because not being an engineer qualified myself, I was able to achieve so much in this industry to be able to share with you these things. So today we'll discuss the way, Okay, we'll discuss the way forward with RE and how we go about doing that here in the Caribbean. So I'd like to say and get your undivided attention and say together let's explore what we call future energy here in Trinidad and Tobago. Thanks. No discussion on Renewables is without first addressing our present problem worldwide, here in the Caribbean as well, which is the effects of global warming. What is causing us to have to move in a different direction is we have been creating so much and using fossil fuel through the industrialized era up to now, here right here in Trinidad and Point Lisa, we use so much of power to create the energy and then sell it. But what are we doing? We are contributing to carbon emissions in the atmosphere, which at some point causes the effect of the ozone layer depletion, which recently I saw a polar bear jumping from one iceberg to the next on TV, and I was wondering, is he going to land on it before it melts? <laughs> because what is happening in the Arctic region is a large hole, and because of the Earth rotation, you find the ozone layer is pushing up in that area, and the hot sun is penetrating that part of the Earth and causing the, the polar ice caps to melt, as well as they recently found that what they call an ancient northern sea route, which 
that was existing in the Arctic region. We can actually get to China quicker than going all the way around by using the, the northern region. So the effects of climate change and every day in our lives we use, whether it's paint, it's chemicals, we go to the shop and we use something, those fumes that emanate from a lot of these uh, chemicals that we use in some way contribute. For a simple thing like uh, um, a lot of us don't know that a cow in a pasture emits 16% of methane gas on a daily basis whenever it's, it, it's um, digesting and that is power. I actually saw um, recently where they hooked up two canisters to the back of a cow and every time it belches, it's saving the energy to use back later in the farmers in the experiment, which look quite funny actually. So the effects of global warming, warming is here in the Caribbean. Because we are on an island, we have a tendency that there are a lot of Atlantic and Caribbean breeze blowing our way, so you find that the air quality is quite good on a daily basis. You still get fresh air, but I travel a lot to the Fies, and I've actually been in cities where I did not see the sky for 10 days till the plane went up into the clouds, and I said, oops, the sun shined in around the air because of the pollution in areas, especially in China, and all of that comes from what? the industrial age, the, the uh, um, India and China is saying, if everybody else could do it, now is our time. But there are so many different ways that you can contribute towards the le lessening the effects of global warming. And one of it is to, the, is to adopt renewable energy so we, we understand that rising temperatures. A few years ago in Trinidad, we never had temperatures 34 and close to 35. Why? It's not the normal 30-year weather pattern anymore. It's becoming unpredictable, the amount of sunshine. So what, you, what happens is you have health issues, you have species and natural habitats losing their areas, you have um, effects on the water resources, agriculture, degradation of coastal areas, and forests as well. So all of this is a part of climate change. That every time you cut a tree in your yard, you're taking away that oxygen that it produces in the atmosphere that somewhere down the line using a gas stove or using some chemical in your house, you are polluting further. So we have to look at all of the effects that um, happen at the same time. Um, uh, the Caribbean current energy status and bringing this issue home today is that we are heavily reliant on fossil fuel, namely diesel, bulk oil, gas, and a number of things that, that we need to look at when there are other alternatives that we can work with. In Trinidad especially, all of our power comes from gas, and the, the balance of the CARICOM is basically dependent on Trinidad and Venezuela. Um, one or two projects that started in Haiti, and it's more hydroelectric, although Haiti is using a lot of coal at the present moment, but there are a number of initiatives and governments are coming together, putting their heads and saying, let's work to reduce the amount of money we're spending in the Caribbean. If you look at the charts, you would see that a number of people, if we change that into TT at the current weight, rates, are paying almost $2.00. And, 60 cent per kilowatt. We're in Trinidad, we enjoy 36 cents. So when, when people come to us at the office and they said, I want to buy a solar system, I say, do you have any idea how much it costs? Okay, um, just yesterday a gentleman called me and he said, I want solar to power my AC. And I said, can do. 
But if you understand that when I give you power, you'll be able to power other items in your house as well. Okay? So it, we have to look at how we reduce, how we work together. And the Italian gentleman from Germany is showing you that you can power an part of an airport, for example, in India, currently there's an airport called Cochin in the southern, the southwestern area of India, in the Kerala state, that that airport is totally run by renewable energy, okay? Um, we recently saw last week the electric car being introduced here in Trinidad. I must say that I've driven in a few and I was able to design an electric car charge on my own that's currently being sold in the European market and you never understand, you still look to turn the engine only to realize that there isn't any. Okay? So, we have to find ways to reduce the, the, the Caribbean, the amount of money we are spending. Right. A number of countries in the Caribbean have started initiative. We know that Jamaica has adopted wind. They have the largest wind project because when I visited that place, the wind was blowing constantly because the, what we have, the Atlantic Northeast trade winds and the Caribbean breeze, the hot wa the water that surrounds us heats up during the day and causes that movement of air in the upper level trough. So you have that sort of uh, um, enough wind in the Caribbean for that. Barbados, our company has an office there, has almost reached saturation point in the amount of solar panels that are being deployed in the country on a daily basis in houses, which the maximum is five kilowatts. Um, a number of people who work in our offices do not pay electricity. They sell electricity from their houses while they are to work. So it tells you this is something we can do and work together. We get the next page. I think this needs a solar battery. <laughs> okay, great. No, the page just before. Thanks. Okay. Um, in the Caribbean, we, and especially here in Trinidad, um, we have started with, started using a lot of solar thermal hot water heaters here in Trinidad. And they have been working quite effective. You have a 20 year shelf life basically of free hot water, you do not need your instantaneous hot water, you do not need that heating element in your house taking 7,000 watts of power to give you hot water when the sun is creating hot water here on a daily basis. Geothermal, Dominica, Montserrat, and St. Lucia is currently doing experimental um, versions of geothermal where because of the volcanic regions they have the, that heat closer to the surface so it's easier to pump the water down and get the heat from it to create electricity of a steam turbine. Right? Solar photovoltaic, which we normally call in the industry PV, seems to be the rampant um, go here in Trinidad that I recently saw a guy, two panels, who is living somewhere up in the mountains. He, he tied it onto the roof of his car, took a truck battery, and then calls me the next day and say, my children was studying last night, which was not happening before. So there are a lot of positives that comes from using, next week, okay. Right. Recently, Trinidad signed an agreement in 2015 called, which we tend to call the Paris Agreement, which is the reduction of renewable energy. 
right? And that is a mandate we sign, we put forward a proposal, and it's a 10% use of renewable energy. I would like you to know that we're not even 0.1% at the present moment because there is not even 1,000 solar panels deployed to date in Trinidad, okay? Um, so if you look at it, the chart will tell you that 2015, 2021, and 2030, we are part of an initiative here in the university. I know you have shown that, that, um, that leading light where this is concerned, and we all want to work towards this initiative. Um, this is something because of my time limit, I may have to go through this a bit quickly, but what are our options here in the Caribbean? We are talking about renewable energy, everybody. Hot water, PV panels, wind. There are a number of other initiatives that you can be deployed, and I'll try to demonstrate to you today how we go about doing this, okay? Biomass. On an average household uses one person or, or, or a household of three produces over two kilograms of garbage per day. Apart from plastic, glass, rubber, wood, and aluminum, which were quite successful at, at being able to recycle, you have cardboard, you have paper, phone book from last year. All of that is power. When you what we call trash to energy, um, using proper filters to, to, to not to send the harmful gases into the environment from burning these objects, you can create power from that. Okay? Geothermal, we discussed that. It's very experimental, but one or two countries are using it. But in the temperate climate, this is used more for hot water purposes. Here in the Caribbean, because of, we have that heat close to the surface. Hydropower energy, I have a friend sitting in the audience who I knew was working very steadfastly on the hydro project in Guyana, and there are one or two projects in Belize and Suriname that's already on the way and producing electricity from hydropower, which is the rainfall, you collect it, you have enough height, you are able to create energy from that 24 hours a day, what we call an energy storage bank. Okay, ocean technology, very experimental. This is ocean turbines and a bit costly in the interim. If you're going large power, there are small projects deployed that you can use for, um, and this is something that in the Caribbean, we have the depth of water and the current for this. It may be far out, but instead of drilling for oil in the ground, the current around you can produce electricity. Okay, solar technology, I probably need a whole forum for this, so I, I don't want to get too much in this, but solar power itself, I recently worked on a project in the Amazon region close to Brazil, where we're looking at doing a one kilowatt, and my colleagues and myself visited there, and I, I saw kids walking bare feet going to school, and I asked, I ask the teacher, I say, how do these kids study at night? He said, they don't, because there's no light. I was able to supply them with a panel, a battery, and an LED light, okay? Because the literacy rate, a simple move like that gives you light, so the Amerindian people in the jungle can now use this and get light and come a part of the modern age as well. Solar thermal, um, my company makes these products, but they are also available from other companies. This is very effective. The, the second one, vacuum tube, I've actually seen steam coming out from them. This, which can be used for restaurants and laundries, etc. cetera. Um, hot water, all from the sun. So anybody requires explanation, I can explain how the technology works. We have wind power, which we went through in detail before. Commercial wind farm, I've seen a number of these um, flying over the Caribbean, you see large ones, and LED lighting. Um, 
LED lighting in itself requires a seminar. LED lighting is 80% energy efficient. And I hope the next time I come in this auditorium that we'll be able to power all the lights in here from renewable energy, change the lighting system which we have now, which is compact fluorescent, even better lighting. And I was able to take this light into the Amazon and show to several people and the interesting aspect of this light is I'm not the person creating electricity. It has its electricity in it. So when the electricity goes, this stays on for five to six hours. I'm, I'm currently working with a factory to see if I can get this on almost seven hours. There are remote control fans as well that can work from solar power. So there are a number of initiatives where that is concerned. Solar hybrid energy here in Trinidad, because we do not have grid legislation and uh, net metering, we have no other choice but to employ what we call hybrid systems, which is PV power, batteries, inverters, that when we get the electricity legislations in place, we'll be able to um, cell power to TNTech. I hope um, the gentleman who's coming after could understand that I want to sell him power at some point. And I hope all of us here would like to do that. This is a commercial renewable energy storage bank. If you have a couple of these in your house, you may not need the, the local utility because anything other than hot water and AC, you can power it in your house with renewable energy. And like I said, from early in the morning till evening, we have been seeing power here in the Caribbean. Um, the major challenges in the Caribbean um, is the technical aspects, outdated equipment, low efficiencies, socioeconomic, and something that we call energy poverty. If you can't buy it, you can't use it. Okay, so we have a number of poor people in the areas. They come to us on a daily basis and I'm always happy to assist. Okay, environmental, we have to look at how we do this in the Caribbean that we don't contribute to global warming but change our whole aspect of how we do renewable energy. Okay, like all things we must have a pathway and it starts with regulation and legislation. We signed an agreement. Where is that roadmap? Where is that policy framework that says how we go about renewable energy in Trinidad? I have not seen it. I would like to work on, on a committee with something like this. And I call upon the powers to be that Sooner or later, we have to set our own, not the Electricity Commission, but a Renewable Energy Commission for how we do solar in this country. And it starts with an education program, quality, like the gentleman said, tier one equipment, solar panel lasts 30 years, battery eight to 12 years. So you have that sort of, um, right. And this is something I have to call my pride and joy. This is a building recently completed in Port of Spain. It is around the savannah. You can see a beautiful view. It's doing 20 kilowatt. We were able to get permission. This is contributing to three and a half to 4% power into the building at the present moment. And when I monitor it online, I've actually seen the panels come alive 5.30 in the morning peak at 11 to 5 o'clock and then go back down in the evening. So a 10 kilowatt inverter is producing 11.5 kilowatt, which is, it is actually peaking and getting more because of our ideal conditions here in the Caribbean, over a thousand watts per square meter of energy every day the sun shines, okay? So I have to conclude, I see somebody sending me a signal, so um, I'd like to thank you, um, open to suggestions, and like I said, the next bright idea could come from a simple bulb, which is deploying renewable energy in your lives, making it part of every day, and I wish I saw more students, but before I go, Prim, I, I have to 
to throw a challenge out to this university that has taken the forefront in that let's work on creating an energy innovators lab. I have to go abroad, make things to bring it to Trinidad. We can do it here. We can set our own solar team, train them and send them out to do installations for people that can come directly from the university. Assembly of solar panels, renewable energy batteries, and street lighting, and energy audits. We can start at all the government buildings, start at all the universities, all the supermarkets, and 80% reduction, we can start at home. So energy efficiency and renewable starts here today with every one of us in this room. Okay, I thank you for your time.